All right, hello everyone. Can everyone hear me just fine? Awesome. Well, we are super excited to be here today. My name is Katie Lampkin, and I am a staff product manager at Intuit of Platform and Open Source. So I'm Alex Gadro. I'm a senior software engineer and Argo CD maintainer at Intuit. And we are going to be talking about today taming the chaos, fine-grained RBAC controls in Argo CD. I know, super exciting topic. So just to quickly review our agenda today, we're going to touch on the Intuit developer platform so you guys can understand at which the scale that we're working with. We're going to talk about some of the challenges that we faced internally and our goals when facing those challenges. We're obviously going to look at our solution and how we addressed that and achieved our goals. And then some takeaways that you guys should have. So our Intuit development platform. Now who is Intuit? Intuit is a global financial company that builds an AI platform to power our 100 million customers. We are super excited to be here at KubeCon and at ArgoCon because we're also really big in the open source community. So let's look at our Argo CD platform internally. We have 50 plus instances, over 31,000 applications, and over the last four years, we have 8x our developer productivity. So that's huge for us, and we don't want to stop there. We want to make sure that we continue to improve developer productivity so that we can continue providing the best experience for our customers. So what, in ch what challenges are we encountering today that unfortunately you know, prohibits us from continuing to move forward with our developer productivity? So we have two different personas that we're looking at. One is our application developer, the developers that build out the experience for our brands like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Credit Karma. And today, they are actively using Argo CD to help manage their applications, but Unfortunately, they are not as experienced with Kubernetes and Kubernetes resources like us platform engineers, us DevOps engineers, and so they have some trouble using the Argo CD UI. Unfortunately, we have encountered some incidents in which developers have accidentally deleted live replica sets, live rollouts, live deployments, because they thought they were deleting a different resource that was unhealthy, and unfortunately, it did cause an outage, but because of our recovery patterns that we have on Argo CD, we were able to recover extremely quickly. It's just we can do better. We can avoid some of these incidents by these accidental mistakes that are being had. From a platform engineering standpoint, our platform engineers, our Argo team, is supporting all of our users, not only using our Argo CD applications, but using the Argo CD UI as well. And they want to make sure that they're enabling our application developers to be, to be strong, to be confident, to be able to function throughout their daily lives, to, to not need them you know, when we have these accidental you know, incidents. We want to be, make sure that we can you know, help them prevent these incidents from taking place and to enable them to be confident moving forward. So when approaching this problem, we really needed to understand what actions do developers do using the Argo CD UI? And so if you take a look at this donut chart, you can see that the most common action that people are doing internally at Intuit using the Argo CD UI is deleting resources. Now, we know that is the action that's causing us problems today, but it's still really important for us to look at the rest of the actions that are happening on Argo CD so that we can make sure when we are introducing the solution that we are continuing to enable developers to do their daily jobs to make sure that they can manage their applications successfully and safely you know, without having these accidental mistakes. So, the other most common actions that you can see on the Argo CD UI is running actions themselves. And these actions can be, I want to uh, promote to full with my Argo rollout. I want to restart an Argo rollout. I want to an abort an Argo rollout. All you know, related to these rollout uh, actions that take place during deployment. They can also be custom actions um, that you have implemented internally or actions that take place with other Kubernetes resources like deployments when you want to restart a deployment. We then have full syncs, patching resources, which can be considered 
a little bit more dangerous than you know something that's encompassed within the scope of running an action, but still very valid actions that developers will need to do during their weekly lives, during deployments and managing their applications. So let's take a step down and really look to understand, okay, developers are deleting resources. Why are they deleting these resources? What does the span of these, of these deletions look like? So as you can see, the number one use case for developers deleting resources is deleting pods. Developers will see that, hey, maybe I'm in the middle of a deployment and a pod has become unhealthy. Maybe my pods have been running for an extended period of time and they've become unhealthy. And their instinct is, hey, I need to go you know, delete this pod, I need to restart this pod, and if I do that, it could just be my unstable pod, it comes back up, you know, it could be fine, dandy, and healthy, and that was just a quick fix of you know, getting me on my way. Now, sometimes this absolutely works. Other times it doesn't, and they need to investigate further, but for a lot of our internal runbooks for our developers, that is the first action they take when they see an unhealthy pod. This action, when it's done to a single pod, um, depending on the number of pods they have, is significantly less dangerous than deleting something like a rollout, like a deployment, like a replica set. So now when we take a look at, okay, developers are also deleting rollouts and replica sets and other types of objects, that's 20% of the deletes that are taking place. These are the more dangerous deletes that we wanna make sure that we are keeping an eye on. We discussed with some developers and we wanted to understand, hey, you know, what are your actual use cases for some of these deletes? And a lot of them weren't necessary to facilitate via the UI. We discussed with our application developers and we were like, hey, if you actually want to clean up these resources, if you want to have these deletes happen in a proper and safe way, then let's go about that doing a pull request. Let's make a pull request on the actual Kubernetes manifest themselves. Let's delete those resources there, send it through your CI CD pipeline, and that will take care of the deletes as well. So that if we were to take away these permissions from a UI standpoint, that you still have the capability for you know, deleting these resources as you see fit and that is appropriate for your team, but we will help you make sure that you do that in a proper, more secure, more streamlined, more GitOps friendly mechanism and avoid some of these outages. So if we take a look at our current state today, um, this is a super quick demo, I just wanna show you guys, unfortunately, how easy it can be to shoot yourself in the foot. So here is Argo CD, right? I have an application up and running and I see that I have a pod that's unhealthy. Um, I also see that, you know, my replica set is progressing, you know, there is this UI that has, you know, a lot of text in it that's telling me about, you know, dependent resources and, and this could be a little dangerous, but I saw a broken heart and I know I need to fix it. Unfortunately, as easy as that, I can press delete, I can press OK, and now my replica set was completely deleted. All of my live traffic that was being routed there how, now has nowhere to go. Well, fortunately, Argo CD is set up to recover. It is recreating that replica set, it is recreating those pods, so my outage will be short-lived, but it was that easy to cause an outage and to completely reroute all of my live traffic to nowhere. Okay. Let's talk about our goals. So we want to make sure that we have zero change-induced incidents caused by these manual interventions. We also want to decrease the number of incidents that our Argo team is brought in to provide support engineers for. And ultimately, we want our developers to be happy and confident and to be their own SMEs over their Argo applications and to remove the reliance that they have on our platform teams. Now I'll hand it over to Alex to talk a little bit more about our solution. Great. Thank you. So have you seen there's really no way in the Argo UI to differentiate deleting a pod from deleting a replica set? Um, so before getting into how we implemented and how we resolved the issue, 
uh, let's dig into the Argo uh, policy syntax. So I don't want you to feel like you're back at school, but it will feel like that a little bit. So <laughs> the previously how you will write your policies for update or deletes uh, is simply with a policy line like this, and you will specify the action as update and delete. And this will give you the permission to delete anything in the application. So there's two big drawbacks. The first one is that you don't have a way to differentiate which resource you're giving permission to delete. And the second drawback is that it allows you to delete the application itself. And knowing that you have feature like cascading delete on an application, that's another way it can create an outage. And it's the same thing for update. So you're not, you're allowing people to update their live manifest in Argo CD UI but you're also allowing users to update their application. So they can update the target revision, set that to a branch that hasn't been reviewed, and again, deploy things that maybe you don't want them to deploy. So Intuit decided to contribute a new feature uh, to implement what we wanted, and we call that the uh, fine-grained RBAC. So the policy will now look a little bit uh, different. So the action is now prefixed uh, suffixed with uh, the path to the resource you want to give permission to. So, for example, the first uh, fine green policy here is allowing users to be able to delete pods. And this action will only give them permission to delete pods in their application. So it won't give them permission to delete a replica set, rollout, deployment, or the application itself. The same thing is available for update. So in this example, we allow them to exit their deployment manifest in the UI, but it's only their deployment manifest that can be updated. So this feature would, comes with some limitation. Uh, the first one is because we wanted to keep backward compatibility for all of you out there. Uh, so if you're still using the delete and update, I will call them global action, uh, those action will still give you permission to delete or update sub-resources. Um, so the cost of that, there's like a non-trivial scenario where you might want to deny permissions to update or delete sub-resources, but allow user to update or delete the app itself. Uh, this will not be possible, but we already had discussion in the last contributors meeting on adding a feature flag and making that possible. So if you're looking to contribute uh, in your hotel room tonight, you can implement it and uh, come see us at the Argo CD or Intuit Boot uh, for a review. Um, so that's it for the feature details. Now let's see how we implemented it at Intuit. Uh, but before that, we need to review a bit uh, how Intuit is structured to understand how we configured RBAC. So Intuit has a three-level role per team. So usually when you join a team at Intuit, you'll have the developer permission, and this will give you the basic right on your application. Um, there's another level of role, which is the DevOps role. Usually DevOps role will have a bit more permissions, uh, and that will allow them to do some operation that are more risky but are necessary during incidents. So it will help them uh, mitigate the incident faster. And the final role is usually limited to a few number of user, and it's the admin role. So basically, it gives them godlike permission on their application. And we do that because uh, developers need to be independent. They cannot rely on a central ops team uh, in case they don't have uh, permission on their application. So now that we know the role structure, how do we use that at Intuit? Uh, so Argo is configured with uh, DEX SSO to integrate to our IDP. Uh, the IDP knows about the role system and it will return that during authentication in the group claims. And that's how Argo will know uh, what are your roles and uh, which teams you're part of. Another important feature is uh, the integration between the IDP and Argo. So 
or IDP knows what's a microservice, or IDP knows what's a team, who's the member of that team, and the IDP's responsibility will be to create the app project and the applications in Argo. So you have two places in Argo, usually you can configure RBAC, so there's the global config map and the app project. Because our IDP knows about the app project and the team structure, it can create the app project with the appropriate RBAC. So, talking about RBAC and app project, let's review this YAML. I hope it's big enough, otherwise you can take a picture with your phone and zoom in. Um, so you can see, highlighted in bold, the three different roles. So we have dev, DevOps, and admin. Um, the first policy in the dev role is basically what allows developers to do anything in their non-production application. So it, it, it's a wild card for the action. They really can do anything in non-production. It allows them to test, uh, test migrations, and do proof of concept. Uh, the next four policies are what they get in production. So for their production application, developers will get read permission, sync, executing action, and now we have our first usage of the fine-grained RBAC, they'll be able to delete pods. So we saw that it was 80% of their action, and it's not usually the action that causes outages. But before, we could not just give them permission on a global delete. Um, and then the DevOps role, it has the same permission as devs, but we see the second usage of fine-grained permission. The DevOps user will have access to edit manifest live in their applications. Uh, so in the case of an incident, they can fix it right away and then do the pull requests to mitigate the issue and resolve it. Um, and finally, the admin permission for the, that last mile, uh, last mile access in case uh, they really need to do something that they don't have uh, permission to. So, little demo again. All right, so let's take a look at what the user experience is gonna look like after we implemented our fine grain RBAC. This is lightning quick, 20 seconds. So Leo is signing into the UI. He's like, you know what, I wanna go delete my deployment. He goes in, he copies the name of the deployment, goes to populate it in the text field. Uh-oh, permission denied, and we're saved. Hmm. All right, takeaways. So, happy devs who feel safe. This is huge not only for developer productivity, but also making sure that developers can continue feeling productive and safe while doing their development. Less incidents caused by human errors. Um, we want to make sure that our uptime and our availability is the highest possible, and so any way that we can do that to mitigate any of our incidents is huge. Um, Having a culture of secure deployment um, may not be the most fun thing in the world, but ultimately is what's best for our businesses and what's best for our customers. And finally, and most importantly for Intuit, we wanted to make sure that we ensured that this was an open source friendly solution and that all of our Argo contributions continue to be open source friendly contributions. So that was really important to us here. If you want to learn more about what Intuit is doing in open source, please scan the QR code and follow us on Intuit Open Source LinkedIn. We have a newsletter. Please subscribe to that. Come visit us at the booth. We'll have more Argo plushies tomorrow at KubeCon. So if you didn't get an Argo plushie, come see me at the booth tomorrow morning at KubeCon. And if you have any questions for Alex or I, please either ask them now or we're also available on CNCF Slack. Thank you very much. Yeah. Things for me. <laughs> so we had a near miss on an outage with the sync permission, where a user thought they needed to use force replace and accidentally wiped out their entire application. So is there any plans to extend fine grain permission to the sync action as well? 
Yeah, there's actually an active issue, and there was discussion last week on doing kind of fine grain R back for the sync as well. Uh, there are different opinions. Uh, it's really, uh, it's a complicated issue to solve. It maybe there's airbag is not the best way to fix that. Uh, but yeah, if you do sync with replace, you kind of delete the resource and you can also uh, cause an outage. Um, so I don't really know the issue number, but you can for sure search it on, uh, on the GitHub project. Thank you. Have you considered adopting the existing RBAC infrastructure that exists inside of Kubernetes and extending that to Argo yes. instead of this custom format? There's also an issue on impersonation. So um, our, like the Kubernetes RBAC engine is great, but it's also limited. Uh, so we do have a UI and we do have more let's say, uh, operation that can be done in the UI, and it, those operations are sometimes hard to express as a Kubernetes role, uh, role and role binding. Um, but yeah, I also don't know the issue number. Oh. Yeah, so it's impersonation is an alpha, but for the sync only, right, on the app project resource. So it's not for all the operation you do through the UI, I think. Yeah. This would probably be a great thing to talk to us about after the fact at the Excellent. booth. We can pull in more of our maintainers. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Woo, thank you.